Easy people, welcome back to my channel at Big Steve MCFC. And this is my new show. We are the South Stand. We are the South Stand. We are the South Stand. And I've got a great guest today. Um, MCFC lads on Instagram. Nice Luke, how are you doing, mate? Yeah. Not too bad, to be fair. Yeah, just got just excited for the games to come, excited to be on. Second episode, yeah. as you said, of the uh, the new the new show. So yeah, excited to be on it, to be fair, yeah. No, it was good. It, last week was good. Um, plenty of support. And basically, all we're trying to do is just... I go on a lot of streams where I'm on with rival fans and it gets a bit heated, a bit toxic, and you're defending your club. I just want some of these shows where I can sit back, relax, talk about City. No one's coming for me with an agenda. And literally, we yeah. can just talk about it. And this week, obviously, is one of the biggest uh, weeks we've, we, we, yeah. we can think of. Before we go into it, we all get excited. Yeah. I want to talk about Burnley, mate, at weekend. Burnley, for me, at weekend was one of them games where if it had banana skin written on it, you know, that was the game. I was yeah. a little bit nervous. I got down to the ground a bit early. Uh, I had to walk around, plenty of City fans in the cricket club and that. And, yeah, um, yeah it was a bit nervous. How did you feel about it going into the game? Um, going into it, I've always thought Sean Dyche and Burnley, a very defensive sort of outfit, They'd always been decent. I this could be the year they're going down, but especially seeing seeing how decent they've been at the back. Like they, they've had a few draws against big sides. They've done all right against the big sides. And I thought it could have been a bit of a banana skin, yeah. Um, and as I said to to my dad before the game, we needed that early goal in the game. That, that if we didn't get that, if it was nil nil half time, I could have seen us uh, definitely coming out with that with not not three points. Yeah, that was the same. And you know, got in the ground a little bit nervous and. We started okay, you know what I mean. They had a, a, a header really on, which just flashed wide. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Obviously, when we when we speeded it up a little bit, and, and we and that little one-two movement, and, and the, the cross ball by Rodri, Sterling knocks it in, and De Bruyne with the finish, that you could almost feel the atmosphere in the city and just sort of go, yeah, Oof, we calm and a little I could, bit. I could feel Burnley as well just dropping because they needed they needed to keep their entire game plan is keep us tight for eighty-five minutes and maybe push forward a little bit towards the end or even just sit back and, and take the, uh, the the draw. But yeah, we needed that early goal and definitely the away end, it just, just was a bit, a bit of rela relaxation going on there as soon as we scored, yeah. And then anyone that doesn't know you, obviously um, Luke does some vlogs, brilliant vlogs. The reason I don't, I don't do any vlogs is because Luke does the best vlog. So there's no point in me trying <laughs> to do a vlog because he does the best vlog. So yeah, yeah. Anyone that hasn't checked out Luke's vlogs, yeah, nice make sure you check them out. But um, I seen that you were you seen Cole Palmer in your way, and that's always a bonus. yeah, 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 yeah. So um, I think Everton. I was on the top tier at Everton. There's two tiers. Cole Palmer was in the uh, the bottom tier, right? And uh, thought oh, it's a shame. I could have could have got a nice picture of them or something. And he he is just as far as the phrase goes, he's one of our own. He was in there, walks in with a cap on with with all his his people. And he's there getting pictures with everyone, having a chat. And yeah, I just think it was quality that. To have one of the players in the away end, it just shows you really how much of a top guy he is. Yeah, it was quality to meet him, yeah. No, no, it's brilliant. It's brilliant. Big up the chat. The chat's going off as well. The 299 super sticker there from Thompson. Thank you for that. I really appreciate it. Um, I'll just get you shared on my Instagram now. Sorry, Steve. Yeah, do it, do it, do it. So Cole Palmer in the city and I seen him at Everton as well. He was in the city and the Everton. That's always good to see the players back in the boys. Um, and like you say, once the first goal went in at Burnley, you won nil up. Um, I'm going to be totally honest. Burnley are doomed. Burnley are terrible. Yeah. They did not offer anything. Yeah. They didn't even like. I thought, you know what? They're going down. They're going to rattle a few of us. It might get a bit taste there. Nah. Yeah. They had the big fella up front. He must be. Bigger than Crouch. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. how, how tall is that guy? I think he's six foot seven from what I know, yeah. He's a big Unbelievable. Guy. And I tell he's you what, he ain't doing guy. much running. So you've got to literally put the ball right on his napper. Otherwise, he's pointless of him even playing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> no, it's mad. And then, like you say, the second goal, um, great move again. Sterling involved. Looking really good on the right. Um, pulls it back. Gundogan with a little deflection shot, but... I'm taking it, and then it's two nil, and then we can we can definitely relax a little bit then. At that. Exactly, yeah. Sterling, I think, was especially good. He's come into real good form recently. I think it's perfect timing, perfect timing. He was definitely one of the best players we had against Burnley. I'd, I'd say anyway, yeah. 
Do you um do, do, there's some chat in here, man? Do you um do you prefer like, who's this guy here? Come on, Dirk. I thought Greenwich. <laughs> I thought Grealish had a good game, me. I yeah. thought he did well, you know what I mean? He linked it, up the play. The thing well. is with Grealish, right, in the modern day, the modern day, people just look at the goals and the assists and that's, they don't look past it. I think Grealish, since that game in the derby, I think he's been very good. He's been up there, definitely above average in our team. And I think as soon as he actually starts dropping them goals and assists, people are going to see it more. But some people, you got you got to look past. He's not got, he's not got all the goals. He's not got all the assists. you got to look past that a bit sometimes. And he... He has been yeah, playing it's well. Not, I think. It's not championship manager, is it? At the end of the day, yeah. you, you, if you, you're not getting in that side if you're not playing well. Pep Guardiola ain't picking you. You know what I mean? Big up yeah, MCFC exactly. Daps from the Feed the Goal podcast. Never a foul. He's saying the same. The only negative from Saturday, we could have got the goal difference up. Yeah, I agree with that. We could have got the goal difference up. Um, Anthony here, he's saying the same. Grealish is doing fine. Some people. Yeah. Yeah, this one's a good one because I want to talk about this. I predicted last week on this show. That Nathan Aki would start and we would win yeah. 2 0. So big up to me. But um, Nathan Aki, and early on in the season, he used to worry me a little bit. And, and I was a bit of a critic. I, I knew he was a good player, but I always thought he had a mistake in him. And I always thought, especially when we had Mendy on that side as well, that him yeah. and Mendy down that left was terrible. Now that Mendy's obviously, uh, you know, padded up, um, yeah. I think Aki, when he's come in this season, has been solid. And I think. I've got to take me out to him, and I think he's a steady centre half now. And I think I don't yeah. get as worried when I see his name on the team sheet. What about you, with Aki? Have you ever thought? Okay, about... I always thought last season I could I could look at him and I saw maybe there might have been a bit of a mistake in him. He looked a little bit wooden, but I think that was partly because he's come from Bournemouth, who'd been relegated. I'm, I think I'm right in saying, and he, he's come for a big fee in lockdown. He's not had any, maybe not seeing the connection with the fans yet. He, if you think he's played pretty much an entire season with no fans in, he's had an injury. He's he's coming to a side where maybe at Bournemouth he was one of the best players. And he's coming to City's team and seeing all these big stars around him. And he's might have been a little bit of a, of a rabbit in the headlights almost. And he's he's just struggled a little bit in the first season. He's done all right, but the injuries, yeah, he was struggling a little bit. I think against Arsenal earlier this season, he cleared one off the line as well. And I think ever since then, I've looked at him and thought, he's a solid player, solid player. And I think, yeah, he was oh, yeah, very he did, good. He did a, I know it was offside, but he did a clearance again, didn't he? On the, yeah, he did, yeah. Weekend. But yeah, he, regardless of the offside, he's, he was there to do it. Like Fair enough, it didn't in the end matter. But the fact that he's got into that position and cleared it off the line shows his, his, uh, his, his way of reading the game, really, yeah. Big up Daps as well. Yeah, Van Gaal. Um, sorry to hear about Van Gaal. He's yeah. struggling with prostate cancer. He apparently has admitted that. Um, yeah, man, there's more things um, important in life, you know, than, than, than obviously football. But Van Gaal, obviously, he was manager of United. But listen, get well soon, Van Gaal. I'm sure everyone wishes him the best. We're, yeah. we're a decent bunch over in the blue side of Manchester. And yeah. uh, I even put it on my story yesterday. So yeah. big up Van Gaal, innit? Yeah, Van Gaal, he's one of them guys, he, he never failed to make me laugh. I remember when he jumped on the floor, he was like yeah. reenacting a foul or something. Yeah, he's a funny guy. Hopefully he's all right soon, yeah. Wish no, he's good, he's good. And just touching on Burnley again, um, we managed to rest a few players. I know um, Mares, it's Ramadan. Um, yeah. So he he might have been struggling because Burnley was a weird climb at a weekend. One minute it was yeah. absolutely roasting, my head was burned. Yeah. Next minute, it was like minus six. Then it was Aylstone, and it was like, it was crazy, man. But Bernardo got a little bit of a rest as well. Um, yeah. What do you reckon with this game now coming up tomorrow? Atletico, um, we know what they're about. We, we, we see what they did to Man United. We know Simeone is a great manager. They've got some great individual players. Everyone's expecting a really, really niggly tough game. Um do you think that Atletico is going to try and come to the Etihad tomorrow and steal a draw, basically dig in deep and let City try and unlock them? Or do you think they're going to surprise us and think they can get something at the Etihad? Um, I think if you look at their form this season, the way they've played in the league has been poor. The way they played against United, they did well to beat them. But as we know, United haven't been in incredible form themselves. So I think they're going to come and try and draw the game, especially with away goals being taken away now feel like there's no incentive for them to get an away goal at all. So I think if they could take a nil-nil now, they'd obviously take that. And I think that's what they're going for. They're going for a nil-nil counter-attack us. They're going to look at the kind of game plan that like a Spurs or somebody's played against us this season and pulled off. 
And I think, yeah, they're, they're going to definitely be going for a defensive defensive uh, a game. That's what they're going to bring to us. Simeone is that kind of guy, isn't he? Yeah. You can definitely see that counter-attack, obviously, with Griezmann and, and Felix. Uh, and I thought they were good against Man United. I thought they, they kept the ball well. And, 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 and Pep said it today. People are describing them as this aggressive defensive team but yeah you look at the quality they've got on show they can they can mix it up a little bit and i think i think city's got to be on the ball tomorrow i think pep's got to have done his own work and i think i think there could be a few surprises especially with kyle walker not playing i think yeah do you think zinchenko's going to uh, play i think um the way they play on the counter we do need some sort of pace in the fullbacks and i think zinchenko for me needs to play with cancelo because the other way you could look at uh, maybe doing it is having Laporte, Stones and Ake play. Basically, have one of them on the side. But I mm. think the way they play, recovering back, obviously we've got no Kyle Walker. That's that's the perfect man you need to defend counter-attacks, the way he gets back with such speed. But obviously, there's no Kyle Walker. So, for the first leg, I do think, yeah, I think Zinchenko's got to be in there for me. So, Zinchenko left back, um, Cancelo at right back. Would you go? Would you keep Ake in the side, or do you think Stones was rested for a reason? Do you think it's going to be yeah. Stones and Laporte? I think, St yeah, I think Stones was rest rested for a reason, and also with it's not it's not a major issue, but with um, Ake and Laporte both being left footed, I think Stones and, and Laporte would be the, the ideal option for me. Yeah, definitely. And what about the midfield battle? The midfield three in there is it going to be? Is he going to put Bernardo, De Bruyne and Rodri or is Gundo going to play? Or do you think the sign that Gundo played at weekend and, and Bernardo didn't, is that, a, is that a bit of a sign for us or what? The way I see it with this is I think Gundogan for me has always been a Champions League player. I think he's such a steady guy in there. You want him there keeping the ball. The way I see it, I think we're going to have Rodri, Bernardo, Gundogan and maybe have De Bruyne further up the pitch. As we saw what, in that the last season. Yeah, false nine almost against PSG last season. We saw that and it's worked, especially in the Champions League. De Bruyne further up. He's got that ability to finish it. So, yeah, that's what I think might might be going on. But who knows? And uh, if we do that, would you play Foden on the left and would you keep Sterling on the right? Or would you play Maris? It's difficult. I think, yeah, I think for me, I could see Foden not playing. But again... Pep's, you could never guess a Pep team. You know, these guys that play fantasy football and stuff, they're always complaining about Pep. And you can, no matter how much you think, you, you know, someone's going to start, you never know. So Sterling, Foden, Mares, I think Mares is, again, with the performances he's put in this season already, with the goals he's getting, and with the performances he put in towards the end of the competition last year, I think Mares has got to be on the right for me. But who knows on the, on the left who could play? We never know. Yeah, big up Marie there, your birthday tomorrow. I hope City do it for you. Big fan of the channel. Thanks for the support. Um, with Pep just touching on saying that Sterling's arriving in the in the yeah. in the big moments, he seems like he's arriving at the right time. He said it with De Bruyne. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if he plays Sterling, but yeah. for me, yeah. me personally, my opinion, the way Mares has been, I've got to play Mares. Yeah, I just definitely. think. We've got to play Mares, and 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 I'll be honest with you, folding in the nine doesn't really cut it for me. I think you're wasting him. I think against yeah, Burnley, then he was coming too deep for the ball. He wasn't really getting it. I think folding on the left is his best position for me. Um, Mares on the right, and like you say, KDB um, pushed up in the nine, allows Gundogan and Bernardo in the middle. I mean, that's a strong, strong team. Yeah, 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 and especially with. Uh... De Bruyne in that position, he can, he can find them key passes because they're going to have so many men behind the ball by the looks of it. Um, you just got to have De Bruyne further up for me, definitely. Because I think a lot of the a lot of the game is going to be in their half. And if you if you were in a position where you're having maybe Sterling or Foden in there, I could see us just squandering chances and not making as many chances. So yeah, definitely for me, I'd have uh, I'd have De Bruyne up there. Doctor Footy there saying Jesus is a shout. What do you yeah. make of Jesus? Obviously. Um... He's not playing as regular as he probably hopes. Yeah. He started well in the season uh, on the wing. Um, injured, do you think he's more of an yeah. impact player now? The thing is, he's almost been pushed out of the team by just just the sheer class of Mares, I think, recently. And even in the Champions League, like we saw a couple of years ago, we had Real Madrid in the uh, the last 16. 
and he was a star. I think he scored in both legs, and he was he was in real form in, in both of those games. So he was in there doing well. But then we've seen Mares sort of take over, and we we saw Jesus play on the wing um, a bit at the start of this season, and it, again he was going well. But I just think he's almost been pushed out of the team. He's been a bit unfortunate with being on the sidelines with a few injuries and stuff. But I think you could see him in there. Who knows? I think he's uh, still got him. He's a good player. And do you think do you think we've got a we've got to get a result at the Etihad? Do you think we've got to get a, a goal or a couple of goals and go over to Madrid with a bit of a lead? Or do you think if they shut us out at the um, Etihad that they've got to then come at us in Madrid? And I think you know in Madrid if they come at us, I think we could pull them apart in Madrid. I think yeah. we are a miles better side than them. And that's not me being cocky. I just I just looked at them against Man United, and I thought. You know, they didn't take the chances and they struggled a little bit. But we're a different kettle of fish than Man United. We're a totally different animal. And if they let us have the ball, do you know what I mean? We we, we could really do them damage. Because I've said it for a few weeks now, somebody is gonna is he's, he's gonna get it. I think someone's gonna get it. We're gonna click into gear and we're gonna hurt someone. And and, and I pray to well, I actually I, I'd rather hurt them on Sunday, but we'll go into that yeah. later. But um listen, I think we could I think we could get a good result tomorrow. And go over to to Madrid um, with a lead. Yeah, well, for me, we, we obviously lost the Champions League final against Chelsea, and the way I see it, I think City on the day and across two legs. I don't think there's anyone in Europe really that's going to beat us across two legs, which is why I could see us getting to the final again. And I feel if if they shut us out for a full game, they're effectively just making making the two legged tie into a one legged tie, and that suits teams that can counter attack you and teams that are going to basically block you out and, and be naughty and kick the ball out of play, waste time. You know, we've we've lost to Spurs twice this season on a defensive side. Uh, last season, we got beat by Chelsea 1-0 in a one-legged game. Leon a couple of years ago, we struggled with and again, got counted a lot again. So I think the one-legged ties are what we struggle with, which is why a two-legged like format suits us a lot. Um, and yeah, that's why I think we definitely need to get a win tomorrow. And if, again, even if we didn't, I could still see us winning, but I think the chances tilt towards them a little bit in, in their favour almost with a, just with a, if they can get a nil-nil or something tomorrow. So we've got to, we've got to get a, a win for me tomorrow, even if it's just a small win. No, listen, it's, it's, yeah, it's one of them things, like you say, it's not a league game where they can come here and steal a point. At some point yeah. in one of the legs or both of the legs, they've got to come out because they yeah. need to win. So if they come to the Etihad and think, right, we'll we'll we'll, we'll shut up shop and we'll try and get a nil-nil or whatever, we'll go over to, to Madrid and then we'll try and put it on City. That could work if in our favour because I, I don't see how they can put it on us without conceding. If they open yeah. up and try and play expansive against us, I think that we we, we take them to the cleaners. But yeah, yeah. I'm I'm excited for the game, me. Um I'm really excited for it. You know what I mean? It's it's different. We usually play the other mob, Real Madrid, it's Atletico Madrid, yeah. Simeone. We've seen him. They, they, they rattled Man United. They rattled Man United on and off the pitch. You know what I mean? Yeah. Simeone got a beer showering. Don't worry, Simeone. This is the Etihad. We're respectable people at the Etihad. Yeah, we won't be throwing yeah. beer at you and that, mate. Do you know what I mean? So take it yeah. easy. But I'm looking forward to seeing Felix in the flesh, Griezmann, um, Stefan Savic, old city yeah. player on the return. You know what I mean? Return after about 10 years, yeah. He was, do you know what with Savage? He was a very, very young lad. He was like to City and he was a little, yeah, he's a little bit out of his depth. But I tell you what, what a career he's had. You know what I mean? He's mm. moved on, and he's he's steady, man. He's a good player. Yeah, and uh, even in even just to kind of slightly move away from that, we had um, Otamendi. So he's we thought he was coming towards the end of his career, and he's playing at Benfica in in the quarterfinal yeah. as well. So it's interesting to see where some of our players have ended up. And yeah, still it's still playing in the at the highest level, really. Yeah. So Savage was just mad, man. We, we, he was a, he was the uh, he was the old style version of Ake because when yeah. when Savage used to play, he used to think, "Fuck me, yeah. man, Savage's going to be fifty p heading it in towards yeah. our own net." But yeah. you know what? He did the job at the time. Big up to Savage, man. It, I'd be, it'd be good to see him because I'm sure the City fans got no hate towards him. You know what I mean? He was a great player yeah. for us. Uh, always did the job. Tried his best. He's won oh, the league with us at the end of the day as well. So fair play. Yes, yeah, yeah, he did. I mean, um, there's some sort of coach gathering going on. I think you know more about this than me. Yeah. Um, 
tell tell the people if they're going to the game tomorrow. Um, we've yep. done this before. Was it was it the Everton game, the last game yeah. of the season? Or yeah, we did it. Chelsea, yeah. Um, so we've done it a couple of times. There's a lot of people on Twitter that weren't too happy about this going on. They were saying go to the pub or whatever. But what we got to do is we got to set the uh, set the the scene for the players here. We, they enjoyed it last time. I remember the players coming out and saying that it created a good atmosphere before the game. Five thirty near Mary D's tomorrow, and we got uh, we got to welcome the uh, the city boys in. Give them give them a, a big atmosphere. Get get a few of the flares going. Get a big welcome. We're not doing anything to the uh, Atletico bus. We'll let that slide through. We'll we'll just give the city uh, the city boys a big welcome. So that's tomorrow at, at the ground. If you can get down a bit early, anyone going? Yeah, nice one. Yeah, well, see, I, I think I'm I'm forty me now, Luke. So I think I'm getting a bit old for these these yeah. things. But I'm gonna I'm meeting someone near Mary D, so I might stick my head round. But no, listen, it's it's good for the young uns to get involved. You know what I mean? I know yeah. a few pals who were saying they're gonna take the kids down and that. And it's a bit it's a bit of a continental style of welcoming. It is. Us, yeah. You know what I mean? Years ago, we was always in the booze and no one give a shit. Everyone was having a pint and a pie and doing yeah. whatever, and then they went to the game. But now. Obviously, a lot of people want to get involved. And listen, as long as we're not doing the scouse trick and smashing yeah, coaches up, exactly. I think it's a good thing, isn't it? You know what I mean? I think, I, yeah, I just think it benefits the players because I remember them saying last time, you know, obviously it was a bit sort of whether whether it was allowed to happen or not, we don't know because of COVID and stuff with the, uh, the PSG one. But it was wild against PSG. We got them Chelsea, Everton last year. We did it a few times. And I think even if it just boosts the players one or two percent, it's worth doing, you know, it, it gives them. It gives them the feeling that everyone's behind them. Obviously, we can do that in the ground as well. But as they're coming in, they're motivated. Then from that minute, two hours before kickoff or whatever it'll be, they're ready to go and they're ready to, to win the game. So we got. I think we got to do it. If anyone can get down there, get down. Ben's not a fan here. Look, don't understand the coach gatherings. It makes us look like Liverpool. Nah, Ben. Yeah. Listen, there's other teams all around the world that do these coach gatherings. Yeah. Don't dwell on the scousers. Exactly. Scouts throw bottles of Cronenberg and then pretend that it didn't happen. I was there next to that bus and it got pelted yeah. and nobody give a shit. But we're not like that. We're going to get the blue flares out, going to get the songs out. Exactly. People are going to have a few cans on the road. No yeah. my vote, just blue flares, all about the blues. And yeah, it's going to be a Champions League night. Listen, Luke, the Champions League nights now, I think it's changed. Do you know what I mean? The City fans... Um, the City fans were always a little bit sceptical about the Champions League. We, it was yeah. never really ours. We always felt UEFA was against us. But I've said it this season, ever since Porto last year, it left a bit of a nasty taste for me. Yeah. And I realised that we need to win this competition. And in the early days, Man City as a club, we used to say, oh, you know, we, we're a bit inexperienced. And 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 we we know we never, under Mancini and that, we never really got to the, I know we got to the semi-final under Pellegrini, but... We was not the greatest side. Yeah. But now you look at Man City now. Pep Guardiola is cleaning up domestically. We've got one of the best teams in the world. We've beat Paris Saint-Germain away. We've yeah. done Real Madrid's away. Do you know what I mean? We, 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 we're now one of the top dogs in this competition. Not not Nobody wanted Man City in that draw. So for me, this season, Luke, there's no excuses. I think this is Man City's time. We've got to get this trophy in the cabinet for people to get off our back and I think yeah. the City fans now have got to get behind it, do these coach welcomings, whatever, get in that stadium and let's make that stadium red hot atmosphere so people in Europe think, you know what, Man City, they're not messing about. You look at PSG, yeah? They can call PSG as a club, but the fans are absolutely on it, man. Yeah. Champions League next yeah, month, yeah. And yeah, I was just making the point about when we first got in this competition, I was there, Kolarov scored our first ever goal against Napoli. In that yeah. game, and I remember going to that game, and it just felt we felt a bit out of place. Um, and even the following years, we'd get turned over by the likes of CSK, Moscow, and stuff. And every game, we had none of that experience of the competition. We were picking up five or six yellows in games. We didn't have any like the experience in the team in terms of playing in that competition. Maybe we had Torre and stuff, but we didn't have it. And uh, we did get turned over a few times. But now we steamroll the, the group every year. We're there, ready to go. It's going to be rocking as Alex has just popped up there with a message. It's going to be rocking tomorrow. There's going to be a big atmosphere and I feel like we're going to get the job done, get a big win in the first leg, get a, get get out to Madrid in a week or whatever it'll be and yeah, get get another win and get, get through to the semis. And um, we've heard the press conference today from Pep 
And uh, somebody brought it up about him overthinking. And he said, yeah, he overthinks all the time. Bit of tongue in yeah. cheek. Just touching on that Champions League final last year. Uh, don't want to dwell on it too much because it's a sad day. But listen, we've got to take the rough with a smooth. Um, do you think he overthought that with the DM situation? Did you see that team and think, what's he doing? Or yeah, was you well, like, yeah, he's perfectly justified to do thing that? Is I remember, I remember seeing the team um, and I remember thinking, I saw Sterling's name in there and it wasn't, I'm not saying Sterling shouldn't have been playing, but I saw his name. It was the first name. I remember it vividly on the phone, looking at the team and I thought, Sterling's in there, so where's everyone else going to be? I scrolled down the team and I, I just saw a Gundogan. There was, no, there was no Rodri, no Fernandinho and I thought, ah, that isn't quite what we were looking for there. And the thing is with it, who knows? It's Pep. We're all fans at the end of the day. Pep is the best manager in the world. And yeah. some say he overthinks it, but he might have played Rodri in that game. We might have got beat 3-0. Who knows? You can never know what that game would have been like with, with a CDM in there. So, at the end of the day, you can say he's overthink, he's overthought this, he's, he's done that. He's got us all the way to the final and no one's questioned his, his team selection at all. And there's been times when people have said before games... Why is he playing? Why is he, what's he doing there? And we've smashed someone. So, at the end of the day, for me, maybe he does sometimes get things wrong, but he's the best manager ever. So, there you go. You've got, you've got to trust him, haven't you? Yeah, I say that all the time. I say, look, you know what I mean? He's he's obviously seen the game plan. He's, said he's been training with the players. He's obviously mapped the game out in his mind how it's going to go. And you know what? We can't moan because he does that every week and more or less every week we get a result. It's just the big, the big games like that. You're going to be the light's going to be shining on you. So if you do anything radical in yeah. a big game, and it doesn't go to plan, everyone's going to blame that. But I believe that this season, especially when he's come up against two cool teams, he's put it right. You know what I mean? We've got the job done. Um, especially with Klopp as well. Anfield was never a happy hunting ground for us. Yeah, we're going there now and finally getting results where we never got any results. Um, yeah. But tomorrow, I just think we've got to play our own game. We've got to be patient. We've not got to let uh, Atletico spoil our rhythm and start to get under our skin because they did that to Man United and Man United lost their head and then the crowd yeah. lost their head. We've not got to do that. We've got to make sure the players keep calm. And I think we just keep the ball and we just be patient. And I think I think we can pick them off me. I'm, I, I'm going, my prediction, I'm going 2-0, sir. You know what? I was going to say 2-0 as well. I'll stick with that as well. I'll go for the 2-0 as well, yeah. And I feel like yeah. that's going to be one late in the first half and one late in the second half. That's how it's going to go for me, 2-0. Somebody changing the subject to Tyson Fury all the way, man. The big Gypsy King. What a guy. That's a John, John, John. John, on the overlap. Yeah, John, listen. Gar I just want to touch on this because Gary Neville... Right, he's trying to drag football into a murky place here because yes. we are football supporters, we're not businessmen. Yeah, we don't sit in the boardroom, we don't have any access to sponsorship deals or anything. But all I'm going to say to Gary Neville is what Will Smith said to Chris Rock yeah. Keep <laughs> my club out of your mouth, Gary Neville, because it's nothing to do with you, our kid. You know what I mean? Your own club, ex club, is in the mud, struggling, yeah. and shit. And your team that you, you own, yeah? Exactly. I'm sure, when, well, I'm sure when the Valencia chairman, Peter Lim, the billionaire, invested in Salford City, he didn't invest in Salford City because he knew about Salford. He invested in Salford City, Gary, because he's your fucking mate, right? Now, if Sheikh Mansour wants to call his brother, his uncle, or his mate to invest in the best football team in the world, the current champions of England, you know what I mean? The most successful team in this country for the last five or six years, then I'm sure, Gary, that that is up to Sheikh Mansour. So your opinion means fuck all, our kid. So you can click that up and send it in it. So <laughs> Gary Neville, stick to the overlap, stick to arguing with Carrigo and all that nonsense, yeah. and stick to Salford City and let Sheikh Mansour, who's worth considerably more money than you, get on with his business dealings. Because if I'm a businessman and I want an investor in my club, I'm going with Sheikh Mansour, not Gary Neville. Yeah. That's all I can say on that. So we'll yeah. leave that one there, Gary, our kid. But yeah, everyone's, <laughs> yeah, everyone's going mad for that. But at the end of the day, listen, we're going to talk about uh, the Liverpool game coming up because 
Atletico Madrid tomorrow is the first hurdle. We've got to get through that. We know that. But Sunday is absolutely massive. You know what I mean? We're going into this game one point ahead. We've left the door open a slight jar for uh, Liverpool to get in. They know that they've got a win. We know that we've got a win. I'm nervous about it, but I'm excited, nervous. It's one of them feelings in your chest you get when, you, when you're really, really excited. And I think if there's no nerves in your chest coming up to the business end of the season, you're not a football fan, man. You've got to yeah. feel it. And, and, yeah, and yeah. I think Liverpool fans are feeling it. And I think we're feeling it. And I think Klopp and Pep are feeling it. And I just think, yeah, this is one of the biggest games um, I think I've ever been to. Yeah, I can't wait. well... Yeah, some people comparing it to that game we had uh, just after the new year in 20, 2019, I want to say. Yeah, it was 2019. Um, but that was a lot earlier in the season and that was a must win for us. We were quite a few points behind them. Uh, but this one here, some people might see it as a title decider. Like even, even just based off confidence, if you see Liverpool win, not that two points is an enormous gap to, to catch up, but it's the confidence they're going to get from that, boosting them through the rest of the season as a team. And for me, I'd take a draw now. I'd, if somebody offered me a draw now in that game, I'd personally take it because I feel like we've done it before to them. A lot of their players are the same. A lot of our players, we got similar squads. A lot of the players we had in 2019 are still here. A lot of their players are still there. And I feel like we've done it before. They haven't. They've they've been in title races with us before and we've won all of them. We've had two, haven't we? Two main title races, 2014, 2019. And we, we didn't, we, both of them, we won. So I feel like a draw for me is what I'd take, but I could see us winning. I think I'm going to go for two or three nil is my prediction. You reckon you're that confident? Yeah. I, I'm, I, I don't, right. two or three nil, I don't think that is going to reflect how the game goes. I think it's going to be one of them where we, we could have a draw and, and be fine with it. And I feel like they feel like they need to win the game. So for me, I feel They've, like got it win be... it They've got to win yeah. it for me. They've got to win it for me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think I think it could be even a nil-nil half time and they just collapse in the second half. I don't I personally don't think they've been playing amazingly. In look in the no. Champions League as well, they had Milan. The first leg into Milan, they weren't great. They won 2-0. They got a bit fortunate. And then the second leg, they lost the game. And even even playing some of the league games they've had recently, they've got the recently, they've got they've had the results. But I just they've not been playing amazing. So no. yeah, I think I think we'll beat them hopefully. I mean, that game where we, we had to beat them the other year when Leroy Sane scored. I mean, if you remember that game, um before we scored Aguero, they had the ball off the line where John Stones cleared it. And yeah. It was literally like a millimetre or something. It was, yeah. And then you had the Vincent Company tackle. I don't know if you remember that on Salah. Yeah, on Salah. That was like the second what? minute. Yeah, he come off the ground. I think it was that early in the game the referee's ass went, but I think with VAR now, because he's come off the ground now. there, I think yeah. they're gonna. I think they send him off. Yeah. And then, and then we go up the other end. I mean, Aguero gets knocked off Van Dijk just before that goal, pleading for a penalty. Yeah, and then he gets back on his feet because he sees the ball back in play. Takes that first touch, smashes it in. Yeah. And then oh, you're no. thinking the atmosphere that night in the Etihad was one of the best I've ever heard. Yeah. It, it, you know, derby games are always up there, but that one that night um, was fantastic. And like you say, just before half time, uh, no, was it it's early second half? They got that goal. Yeah, um, Robertson, I think, knocked it across. Firmino edited it in. Yeah. But then we yeah. broke again. Leroy with a finish, and then we should have been free one with Aguero tried to round the. Uh, Allison near the end. I mean, that game had everything. And I, I think this game had everything. The, the game earlier in the season at Anfield, we got a point and I'm taking it because we never get anything. But I tell you what, we should have won. Yeah, 100%. And I think we set the, the, the intensity that high, that game, Liverpool struggled to cope with us and we need yeah. to get that intensity back Sunday. Yeah, because Mo Salah in that game, he played a 10 out of 10 and the rest of the team, I don't think they turned up completely to that game. And I feel like Milner was absolutely terrorised on that. Uh, I can't remember who he, I think he was, Foden was up against him, wasn't he? Yeah. And yeah. he got lucky with a penalty because they, they were checking the VAR on it and it turns out he was just on the edge of the box, but it was a foul. Didn't get given, so they got a bit lucky with that. Milner 
absolutely decked Bernardo as well on a Should've yellow. Gone. Should have gone. Um, and yeah, I think I think they were quite fortunate in that game. I suppose it's it's a bit weird to say they were fortunate with a player like Salah turning up because you know he can do it. But if if one of their big players doesn't turn up, I think they could be done. Well, it, it was that block from from Rodri at the end. Yeah, from, the end from well, yeah. I was like, I was right behind that, and I was like, yeah. he, that, he's never getting that. If you freeze that frame, yeah, he's never getting that for me. So how he got it, I don't know. And, that, and, and touching on Salah. Obviously, he's not been playing the greatest, and this talk of this contract, this contract saga is dragging on a little bit. If you're yeah. in the middle of a title race and you're going for European trophies, FA Cup, the last thing you want is this contract situation hanging over your head. So, for me, what the fact that Liverpool haven't got it signed, sealed, and delivered is um, a bit strange. And I think he's, he's had his head turned me from elsewhere with the numbers. I think he knows he's had a great season, and he's thinking, you know what, no one's had a season like me. But these players out there on 400, 450k a week, and I'm and they expect me to sign for 200k. Yeah, he might, he might not sign, you know. He might go, yeah. Well, I think they'd be very, very weakened by that. If he, if Salah goes, I know they've got this Diaz guy in, they've got Mane, they've got Jota, they've made a few good signings for almost bargain prices in the last few years. But I think if Salah goes, they're going to struggle. Um, I think hopefully. Hopefully, he doesn't turn up um, on Sunday. No, it's going to be a tough one. And like you say, um, just want to touch on a little bit of transfer news. Obviously, the big news is Haaland. One minute he's signing for City, next minute he's signing for Madrid, then he's signing for Barcelona. Even had Arsenal fans yeah, messaging me saying he's signing for Arsenal because <laughs> Odegaard saw it. I'm like, mate, yeah. it's not championship nonsense. manager. Yeah. It's nonsense. He's exactly. only too realistic. I've been told off my guy, it's done with City, so I'm pretty relaxed with it. Um, but what's your take on it? You know, are you ex ex are you sick of the transfer to and from him? Are you relaxed with it, just thinking it is what it is? Is he the man for you? Is he the is he the perfect striker, or do you fancy someone else? I mean, it's good to get other people's opinion because everyone just assumes that we all want Haaland. But I've seen lads that say I want Kane. I've seen lads that say let's give Alvarez a chance and, and buy uh, and buy another midfielder. So, yeah. I mean, what's your thoughts on the whole situation? Well, for me, we've got, we've got, uh, I think we've got quite a decent bit of depth in midfield. You've got a lot of uh, good midfielders and the age for me at the moment, we've got Gundogan, De Bruyne there. They've still got a few years in him. Rodri's got a lot of time in him. Bernardo's got a lot of time. Grealish, we've just signed. Foden can play in there, I suppose, if we needed him to as well. I think, Midfield for me is sorted at the moment. Uh, Fernandinho potentially could sign an extra year if we needed him, uh, but obviously he's coming to the end of his career. Um, for me, I think Haaland, we've got to get him. We've just got to get him. I think in my lifetime, I can't ever remember us hunting down like one of the world greats in terms of everybody's talking about him. You've got him and Mbappe for me could be the, the two most talked about players in years to come. You know, Maybe not Messi and Ronaldo standard, but in terms of how much they talked about, I could see them being up there. And I think we've just got to go and get Haaland. I think he's got the release clause, 75 million euros, but we then got to talk about agent fees and stuff like that. Um, and I think it could be quite difficult to get him, especially with, you know, how Mino Raiol has kind of uh, got his hand in there as, as the agent. But yeah, I think, I think we just got to get him. We need to just go, go get Haaland. Yeah. It's, listen, obviously with his dad being ex city, him obviously being pictured in City shirts, going to cup finals. The time when he walked out at the Etihad saying, beautiful. Yeah. There's all these little things that get you excited. And then you look at him and he's a, he's a monster. He's a machine. And you and you look at our City team and, and we are a machine. And then you just think there's a missing cog at that top end of the pitch. And, and, and he's the missing cog for me. He's my dream signing. Like you said, I can't remember City. We've been linked with Messi before. We had all this nonsense about Ronaldo, but it was never going to happen. Um, Con Aguero, we got at a time when Aguero was mustered. And I mean, we lost our hero. We lost our talisman in, in Con Aguero. And the fans were waiting for that big name to replace him. And it never came. Now, we're saying this season we've been playing without a striker. We need a striker and all that. The, the way it looks at the minute, we've not done bad. You know what I mean? We're top of the league. We'll take it. But I've just got a feeling that this guy, if he signs, 
he's a he's a player for, for for seven eight years. He could he could become the best we've ever had. Do you know what I mean? And it's yeah. just all down to Pep. I think if he signs, Pep signs a new deal, you start to attract other players because they want to play with Haaland. You can see what we're doing. I just think we've got to get this one over the line. I was very, yeah. very surprised that they let Messi slip through the net, especially yeah. with the Barcelona uh, connection at City, yeah. Tixi and Saran and all that with Pepper thought If Messi's going anywhere, he's coming to City, it's just like the old days. He's going to get the gang back together yeah. and going to have it. The fact that we didn't sign him, that made me think that something... Bigger, he's around the yeah. corner. So I'm hoping, Luke. I'm hoping, yeah. mate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thing is with him as well. Um, with Messi, as you said, you th you thought we'd have got him over the line. Messi. For his <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Messi for me. I remember in 20, 2014 or so, we've always tried to go there, but he's never wanted to go. Every time you think, oh, we might be going, he's just signed a new deal. Barcelona have always kept on to him, and I think. 2020 was the big time, the, the most we've ever gone for, for Messi. Uh, and it didn't happen. He stayed another year, he pressured by the board and, and whatever. Um, and yeah, he's, he stayed. And I think at that point, we put so much time and effort into it behind the scenes um, that the club had just made a decision, let's let's not get Messi. Messi's, uh, Messi's gone now. He's 34, I want to say as well. And he's not, he's not the typical sign. And City always sign players. Of, of late anyway, that are for the long term, the 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 young, they've got a lot in them. They can churn out a lot of good performances over like a long period of time. Messi was a few years. You, you'd, you'd only get a few years out of him. And I think Haaland, for me, he's got to be the one we go for. Well, we don't sign these players of, of older age. We, we seem to sign these players of a certain age and they seem to come to this football club and people say, oh, they're only going to last two or three years and they'll move on. But I think this football club is one of the best in the world to work for. I think we give the players uh, the ultimate football experience. And I think you, the fact that you see players staying here for eight, nine, ten years is a testament to the club. And I think the signing of Alvarez, I mean, he, he makes his debut for Argentina last week, scores. He's scoring for fun in Argentina. We've seen this before in Argentina. Sergio Aguero, Carlos Tevez were all big in Argentina. The same press out there that were bigging up these players is now bigging up Alvarez. I mean, allegedly we paid 14 million for him. Now, I, I don't know how true that is, but yeah. that is a steal. That is a it steal. Is. And if this kid can come over here, even if he comes over here on the back of Haaland, if we get Haaland and he comes in, he can just quietly go about his business. That might even mean? be better for him. That might even exactly. be better for him. Yeah, if he comes in on the back of Haaland, he's got, I don't want to say no, no pressure. pressure. He's playing for City, no but he's got... He's got a low amount of pressure on him. And he's also got a big player to look up to as well in Haaland. He's, he's probably probably a different style of player. But yeah, certainly uh, going forward, we'd have some some big names there, some big goal scorers. I think people are laughing at the 14 million here, Perlo. But if that's the numbers I was seeing, 14 yeah, million. Yeah, yeah. I haven't seen anything else of you. Um, I, I can't say I have seen more than that, but it's the currencies for me. It's, all you all you see on different news outlets and stuff is all different currencies flying around. Let's it's somewhere from what you said to twenty. I think it's um, cheap, man. It's cheap. It's At the cheap. end of the day, it's cheap. We're not going to argue over a few quid. We're rich, yeah. so we can. You know what I mean? It is what it is. Yeah, big yeah. up Mo. Mo uh, is a big supporter of my channel. Every city channel I knock about on Mo's there. So big up Mo. Mo there. All I'm seeing city is city extra as well in there. Big Steve. Yeah, yeah, so yeah just been in uh, there, my guys. Uh, big yeah. up uh, Lewis and, and Jordy there. Thanks for that. But yeah, Alex a bit. Listen, Alec, 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 Alec. Alex a big, big fan of mine. He comes on all my channels, yeah, and I really yeah. respect him. But sometimes he rattles to death the chat. I've heard him calling yeah. scouts all sorts of names and that sort of Alec, <laughs> Alec, on the big six, they even mentioned you to me they were going to block you, but I mean, I managed to sort it out. So, Alec. <laughs> I love you, man. I love you coming on these city things. But I know in the pub we can call certain fan bases certain things and we can have a <laughs> But if you do it on here, you're going to get cancelled, mate. So don't, man. But big up, Alec. Um, yeah. Who else is on here who we can chat about? Darren Richardson, good lads. Dazzle MCFC. Yeah, Dazzle's a good fan of mine. It's a big blonde lad comes. It's all over. Yeah, the big blonde lad comes. It's all over. No, I've I, I, listen. I'll tell you off air uh, who told me it was done. 
Um, yeah. And I trust him. The way he said it, I, I could tell he told me and then he thought I shouldn't really have said it, but, yeah, you know, it is what it is. So I'm confident with it, but um, you just always got that thing in the back of your head about City, haven't you? Like someone said in the chat there, still waiting for Isco. And then someone said, I'm still waiting for Kaka. Kaka was done, boys. Like Gary Cook says, AC Milan bottled it, man. We was there with a the briefcase. It had the dough in it, the shirt, the Kaka... Everything Kaka was ready to rumble, man. But you know what I mean. We just we just didn't quite have the firepower back then to get it over the line. Yeah. <laughs> oh, mate, I tell you, I tell you, Sean's a big fan of mine. I don't know if Sean comes on yours. Sean, yeah. oh, Sean's always in my comments. Don't worry about that. Big, well, big Sean, thing. I'll tell you, I had a early in the season. I had a spare ticket for Chelsea uh, away, so I contacted Sean. Yeah. Had two spare tickets actually. And I, I took Sean and his dad to Chelsea and um, we had the best day ever. Obviously, we won. Gabriel Jesus. And uh, big up John, man. So he's been a good friend of mine ever since. And he uh, he loved it, man. He loved it. Let's have a look here. Look, Kaka. Yeah. Kaka, man. I tell you. It nearly got done. They were the days because we just didn't care then. We were just turning up yeah. with briefcases full of money trying to get it over the line, weren't we? But, All the days of FFP yeah. as well, so we could just throw anything throw anything we wanted at that. Um, this yeah. guy, this guy, Jerome. I think it's the same Jerome. Jerome came over from uh, Jamaica and contacted wow. me and I met him outside the, the Etihad. He's a massive City fan from, from Jamaica, so big up, man, for that. Yeah, big yeah, up yeah. For that. But listen, Go so on, it's... Man. it's yeah, go on. I was just going to say, no I've got a lot of respect for the um, the fans out there that aren't from, from England or even closer than that, because it must be hard to stay connected and stay involved, even getting up. I've had, I've had messages off guys saying, I've just woken up, um, watched your video, or woken up at like five in the morning and watched the game. And I just think that is some commitment, that, to a team all the way across the world. And it got a lot of respect for them. Sometimes they get slated a bit, but shout out to any of them that, they get up at all these ungodly times and watch City just to, to stay supporting us. No, it, listen, it is. And, and we're all together, you know what I mean? We're all together and we, we, these different situations, these, these people all around the world that would give anything to get over and have the experiences that we have. And I think we, you do your things with a vlog and we touched on yeah. it before in the show. Your vlog gives a lot of people a lot of joy. I mean, yeah. they can sit back and watch that and, and experience it and see what it's like for a... Because you, you can, you, we, i seen you in Lisbon. Yeah. Outside the ground was mad. You know what I mean? It was crazy, wasn't it? It was naughty, yeah. wasn't it? So at the end of the day, they, they don't see that. And, and, and so these, these fans like Luke that are getting you this content, we're, we're literally going through shit to give you this content. Yeah. So... Uh, what you do, I think, is fantastic. And I think if there's any Man City fans out there that want to see uh, vlogs, just watch Luke's vlogs. Like I say, I'm not even going to attempt them. I don't know what I'm doing. And he's the best vlogger. So get on to him. Guys, but, you might even see Big Steve in a few of them. He's featured yeah, a few I'm in times. A few. <laughs> I am in a few. See Big Steve at half time. He's getting in every time. So there you go. I'm in there all the time, giving me thoughts. But at the end of the day... Um, I think Man City YouTube now there's a varied selection of fans. Um, we've got a good little network. We're all fans at the end of the day. We're not YouTubers. I'm not a YouTuber. Yeah. I know you're not really a YouTuber. You're just doing exactly. it because you give it giving the experience. I'm trying to just defend our club against yeah. the so-called bigger clubs that like to throw shit at us. I've got my audience. A lot of the older blues know me at the game. They they they, they respect it. Yeah. Um. I, if you're going to expect me to be walking around the ground with a camera, it's not going to happen. Yeah. If you think I'm going to be interviewing people outside the ground, it's not going to happen. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just Big Steve, and I just represent City the best I can. And you yeah. do what you're doing, Luke, and City yeah. extra do what they're doing. And there's exactly. a few others that are trying. Sean's trying to get his thing going. And I think if we all stick together and we all just focus on our football team, I think we can get a good thing going. Yeah. I'd agree with that. I just think we're all City fans at the end of the day. There's no need for any... As you, as you said to me before, Steve, uh, you've got some of these other fan bases like United. They're all constantly going at each other, slating each other and just arguing. And it's not They've not got a network of good fans. I see I see some some people piping up and saying horrible things about different uh, different groups, like just, just stuff on YouTube and stuff. I get a few nasty comments, but at the end of the day, 
the vast majority of City fans. They just want to they just want to experience these videos like you're making, Steve. Your thoughts. They want to hear what you're saying. They want to see bits I make at games and stuff. And we just gotta enjoy it. If you don't enjoy something, don't watch it. If you do watch it, and it's it's all it's all out there for you. So just enjoy it, basically. Yeah, and like you say, there's a lot to be said as well. I mean, there's some fans from other clubs that they sit in a bedroom, green screen on, and they're talking about the club as if they're there week exactly. in, week out, feeling it. They're not there feeling it. No. They're giving you a perspective the same as you, sat in a bedroom. Some of them fans are okay, some of them aren't. Let me tell you, you can't beat experience. These fans that go week in, week out, live, breathe yeah. it, giving you these videos on the terraces, on the trains, on the way home. They're the ones that are the ones you want to be listening to. The ones yeah. in these, the ones at other clubs that are causing the trouble are the ones that are sat in the bedroom in London giving people shit. And then getting the things wrong. The That's game. the problem, Steve. Exactly. They're getting things wrong because they don't they don't actually know what's going on. You got some people can't make it to games, and that's fair enough. But they make an effort, these these fans, to stay connected. I feel like some of these guys with the green screens, they just sat there. They watch the game, that's it. They don't they don't see anything else. They look on Twitter for a few transfer rumours here and there, and that's about it. And that, that's why they're getting things wrong. They're misjudging their own fan base, they're misrepresenting them, um, as we've already talked about before. And yeah, I just I just feel like some of these fans, they're just it's just like a modern misconception of what a fan should be. For me, it's it, it, this wouldn't have existed 30 years ago, these these guys, because it's just it's just not real, is it? Not real, City X boys here. I'm not talking about you, lads, man. City X <laughs> boys are busy, man. They yeah. go week in, week out, but they're busy now. They're building the empire, aren't they? We're yeah. we're uh, we're doing the work for you, lads. Now bringing it, but no, it is yeah. what it is. Listen, that's my opinion. I've said it before. You know, for example, you know, Saeed, a big friend of mine at United. He, he, he there's a lot of Man United YouTubers from all over the country saying whatever they want about United. He's a proper Man United fan. He goes week in, week out. And when he gets yeah. to Old Trafford. All he does is get abuse off his own fans because they can't find the the gold bridges of the world because yeah. they'll never be seen at Old Trafford. Yeah. So they target him. But how can you target him when he's a proper red and he's going week in, week out? So that's yeah. why I don't understand. But listen, we don't want to get that Man City. We're a really no. good fan base. We always have been. We want to stay what we're doing. We're in an important part of the season. This is the biggest week, biggest fortnight of, of the last few years for us. Atletico yeah. Madrid tomorrow. We've got Liverpool Sunday. Do you know what I mean? We're flying out to Madrid the week after. Then we're back for the semi-final. Being a Man City fan now is dreamland. And anyone yeah. that's not excited by it is mad. So final thoughts, Luke. Prediction tomorrow. What are you going with? Going for 2-0. I'm going for 2-0 tomorrow. But it's going to be hard. It's going to be a hard game. Don't get me wrong. And uh, yeah, they, as I said, they're going to be a defensive side. Um, Simeone, we know what he brings. Um, I'm interested to see what their fans are like. I know that I've heard they've sent a few tickets back at Atletico. I can see why, maybe because of the uh, they've already been to Manchester just a couple of weeks ago, and obviously the travels ridiculous how much it costs. But yeah, I'm interested to see what the game brings. 2 0, I'm going for tomorrow. Yeah, I'm going for the same 2 0. I think, I think it's going to be very cautious for them, but I think we're going to start fast. I think we're going to take it to a, a, a tempo they've not, not seen for a while. And I think it, it's going to be a tough, tough night for them. And I think 2-0. And you know what? I'm not even going to ask for prediction against Liverpool because, you know what? I'm not going to build it up just yet. I don't want to peak yeah. too early and get yeah, too yeah, excited. Yeah. So the Liverpool game will just keep simmering. And then yeah. at the end of the week, we'll talk about that. Yeah, but listen, yeah. this has been We Are The South Stand, yeah. the second episode. Big up to everyone that's watching. Big up to all the supporters as usual. Please check out Luke's uh, socials at MCFC lads. I'll yeah. put them down below. And listen, big up to everybody. And thank you, Luke, for coming on. It was no a pleasure. Worries. We'll do it again anytime you want, Steve. Get yeah, in there. Everybody, Brilliant. thanks a lot. Up the blues. All about this tomorrow. We are the South Stand. Let's, Let's get the win. win. We are the South Stand. <laughs> See you later, mate. Nice one.